first of all, a pleasure to speak with you today. And I, I'm so happy you have some time for us to focus in on your vision for New Jersey's economy in particular. Um, give me sort of your bird's eye view for what you would deliver for New Jersey's economy. Rhonda, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we know this year over year over year, uh, New Jersey is ranked as the worst business climate in the nation. Uh, we saw what the consequences of that uh, is a couple of months ago when Nabisco moved out. And for the first time in 63 years, Oreo cookies won't be made in New Jersey. You won't smell them in Fairlawn, Bergen County. Uh, 600 good paying middle class jobs went with the migration to the Carolinas. Um, that's not going to be the case under Governor Cetarelli. Uh, I'm determined to make New Jersey's business climate uh, one of the very best in the country uh, so that we can attract large business, but just also be a much better place to do business for medium sized firms and small businesses on Main Street. Uh, that's where I was. I, I get it. So my uh, one of my top two goals is to make New Jersey a much better place to do business and not just regionally competitive. I've gone as far as to say, let's declare economic war on our neighbors. Those are fighting words. What do you mean well, by listen, that? We're, we're losing right now. Delaware, Pennsylvania, the Carolinas, Georgia, Florida, Texas are eating our lunch. And um, that to me is just a slow economic death. And uh, we're not going to have that under Governor Cedarelli. So I have some very bold reforms in mind, some fiscally responsible reforms in mind that can transform the perception of New Jersey overnight with regard to its business climate. So some of those reforms you have in mind have to do with taxes and making reductions, or in some cases, making things uh, that you're able to write off on your taxes. You actually have quite a few details on what you'd like to do. Uh, my question for you is, what will that cost in terms of lost revenue? I think we should increase tax revenues by making New Jersey a place where a whole lot more people want to live, uh, work, and start a business and where firms of all sizes want to do business. That's the way to increase tax revenue. And the way that I proposed making those changes, I think is fiscally responsible. Case in point, it doesn't cost us any money to adopt Delaware's bylaws for corporate governance. We've all heard of the Delaware corporations, Delaware corporations. Other states have done that before. Delaware is one of the most attractive places in the country, if not the most attractive, to establish your corporation. Let's adopt Delaware's bylaws for corporate governance. That wouldn't cost us a dime. I think we should cut the corporate tax rate, which is now the highest in the nation under Phil Murphy, in half over a five-year period. Um, that's a very fiscally responsible way of doing so and would let all firms benefit as opposed to the EDA, corporate retention, corporate recruitment program that's in the business of picking winners and losers. And uh, I also believe that uh, we should make the gain on the sale of an IPO stock tax-free. Um, we don't have a whole lot of IPOs in New Jersey. So you can't say that that's revenue foregone. For small businesses, let's make the first $50,000 of business income tax-free so that mom and pop shops can recoup their initial investment or pour it right back into the business and create more jobs because small businesses are the backbone of New Jersey economy. So let me ask you about those corporate tax incentives. Should we not have them? In the absence of tax relief for corporations, yes, we do need them. I understand corporate retention and corporate recruitment. But you know, whenever somebody says to me, my goodness, Jack, what are you going to do with all the lost revenue? Well, guess what? The governor just approved of a $14 billion tax credit program. That's $14 billion of tax revenue we'll never collect. I don't know why he's never asked the same question. But I don't like government, Rhonda, being in the business of picking winners and losers. Why not have a tax policy that works for all corporations instead of us having to go through that very bureaucratic process of people applying for corporate tax credits us giving them out to only a few, not everyone, and then us having to track whether or not every corporation has met every one of its obligations. So I understand your concept of making some changes where you are perhaps revenue neutral because more businesses come in, more people stay in New Jersey. But when we have more, doesn't that also mean more services are needed, which is also expensive? Not necessarily. Uh, if the economy is thriving, that's fewer people that are dependent on the social safety net. And I do believe in the social safety net. And if more businesses are thriving, that means more of everything here in New Jersey. So listen, the key is this, New Jersey's economy, New Jersey's business climate rather, is ranked the worst in the nation. No one's gonna ever convince me that that's not holding us back economically. 
We also have in our state people that are still reeling from the pandemic and have not found work. Some people have chosen not to return to their jobs, but there are people who are still collecting unemployment and searching desperately for work. When those people go to the, to the polls, go to vote, what should they know about you in terms of what you will do for job creation? So my goal as governor is to have this be a state where people truly want to live, work, retire, start a business, and big business wants to come and open up shop. So uh, I'm all about that. I believe that my reforms will help accomplish that. Listen, we are our brothers and sisters keeper. There are hardship cases out there, and we always need to take care of the hardship cases. At the same time, it's time to get back to work. Jack Cittarelli, you shared quite a lot with me. I thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Ron, thank you. Thanks for watching. For more clips and episodes of NJ Business Beat, subscribe to the NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel.